Phil, we yeah. had a Twitter um, engagement last night about the uh, Moneyball movie. Uh-huh. Uh, and I thought it was fascinating enough to bring on the podcast. Um, and it re- I, I've never thought about the Ricardo Rincon aspect to Moneyball since, uh, until last night. Like, I, it just never hit me that he really – he pitched 20 innings for them and did Not virtually- great. Not even great innings. <laughs> no, just completely average innings. There's virtually no impact to the season whatsoever. Like, probably never even got one. I think his first – like, he wasn't a closer, obviously. He was, like, a setup guy. But his first – if you even want to call him a setup guy, but his first actual save was, like, the third to last game of the year. Um, yeah, but Billy – What? I was looking at – I think I was looking at the wrong Bill Hughes' Twitter trying to find this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in no. my head, I was like, this motherfucker was tweeting about Moneyball and he's ghosting us. <laughs> <laughs> God. Um, no, poor Billy Koch. Poor, this poor guy. 44 saves. And 11 and wins. 11 wins. He had MVP votes. Yeah. He was reliever of the – when they used to give away reliever of the year, I, I don't think they do anymore. Um, but they used to back then, and it was, I think, him and the AL and John Smoltz and the NL. Like, imagine if you made a movie about the Braves and didn't talk about Smoltz at all. He, it, it just, he just, the, you're right. The only mention of him is in in the Royals game where they're going for the, for the record, and he blows the save. He just gets shelled. <laughs> he actually only gave up, like, one run in that inning, but they make it seem it like. inherited runners. Okay, maybe that's what it was. But, uh. And he, that's just his only, like, imagine how excited Billy Koch was. Like, holy shit, my best season ever. Like, they did a whole movie around this. Like, I'm one of the no-names who kind of got here. I, you know, I, was, I was nothing on the Blue Jays. Come over here, have a magical season, MVP votes. I've got to be in, like, 15 minutes here. There's got to be a moment where, like, I'm just one-on-one with Billy Bean. They have our our in-depth like heart-to-heart conversation about like no one believes in you i believe in you and the only mention is when you give up runs to the royals and that's it and beat the shit out of the dugout (laughs) like like, he literally has three names that they're trying to replace on their board for the offseason it's jason giambi johnny damon and jason isringhausen so like they very much set it up like we lost our closure They make that a plot point. Like, this is a hole in our team. How do we get these back? (laughs) Yeah, they go out and they replace him tremendously with a guy. And they spend the whole movie talking about Chad Bradford. Like, it's insane. It's genuinely insane. Scott Haddenberg, like, I like that. I thought I was like, because, you know, when that season happened, I was like five. So I don't really remember it. But I was like, man, Scott Hatberg must have fucking he must have hit 50 that year. He had 15 home runs yeah, or not even yeah, 15. Yeah. He had no guess of 807, which is like fine. Like for for Scott Hatterberg, that it it is noteworthy that he's that good. But I had someone tweet me today. They were like. Did you even get the point of the movie? It was to focus on the money ball parts of it. And I was just like, yeah, they, they painted a very false narrative that these inconsequential players are the reason they won 103 games. They had the MVP and the Cy Young. And they the MVP and Kevin the Cy, yeah. Oh, my God. It almost <laughs> proves that the entire analytics movement is born out of a lie. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, A, they lost. Like, I, they kind of bury the lead on that at the end. They're like, ah, he lost, but the Red Sox offered him a job. Like, no, he's still fucking lost. Um, yeah, they don't even talk about that series. No, they just show Ray Durham. They acquire Ray Durham at the trade deadline. They don't mention that at all. He makes the last out of the season. Yeah. Um, They don't talk, like, Jermaine Dye, they mention once, and it's just like, Billy Bean says his last name. Like, I want him and right. Um, They, like, Eric Chavez may as well have been a dead person. Like, they don't (laughs) mention, he's he's the only, he's, uh, how do I want to phrase this? Um, He's, the only person the A's have ever paid money to. Like he's got the longest contract and most money contract in Oakland A's history. It's like $80 million. Like he is the Oakland A's as far as I'm concerned, but they don't talk about him 
fucking all. Eric Burns is on that team. He's electric. They don't talk about him at fucking all. I still don't know why they spend like 20 minutes of Moneyball on like his ex-wife and weird new new boyfriend like that. I've never understood. Wait, who is it? For the women watching. Who's the weird boyfriend? I'm trying to think. He's like an, an earthy guy. He's oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, just yeah. such a fucking dweeb. <laughs> he sucks. And he's like... Uh, you could tell, like, Billy Bean, like, fantasizes about just, like, bashing his brain in. Yeah. Yeah. He's like... Putting him in a locker. He has lost Giambino is what he calls yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, for some reason, like, his daughter plays the guitar. Like, all of that could have been cut from Moneyball, and it would be the same movie. And, like, I that and Rincon could all go out the window and just maybe talk about Zito, Hudson, and Mulder, three best well, that, pitchers. The guy who was, like, the whole movie is supposed to be about, like, the Moneyball and that. Like, yeah, sure. But if they had only had Hatterberg, Rincon, Jeremy Giambi, and fucking Scott Hatterberg, like that team wins 40 games. Like yeah. that's <laughs> the reason that team, because they talk about the winning streak. Like, right. Even in the winning streak, they show Hatterberg do one thing. And that was just they hit the walk off to win game 20. The rest of that winning streak was because they had fucking Zito Hudson Mulder, Corey Lytle, rest in peace. Yeah. Ed Lilly. Like they that's a strong fucking four or five. Corey Lytle was like maybe like numbers-wise, the third best pitcher on that team. 